Oh. I love his hair. I freaking love his hair. Okay. Let's go. Okay, I want to sleep now. What the hell is this? Oh my god! You were quite punctual. You bet! <laughs> Sup, and welcome aboard the Argo, the vessel of Nine Valley's new high-speed transport service. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, okay. Wait, it's hot. Okay. Wait, and there is no fun. Wait, that's like, wait, I think I go. Because I I'm sweating. A child. We might have been better off on the ground. I'll have you know that I'm a licensed pilot. And that's real rich coming from you guys. You look like a bunch of kids about to go on a picnic with their daddy to me. Ooh, we got burned. <sighs> but boy, did I not see your daddy's ID coming. Who knew my mystery client would turn out to be our former Governor General, Rufus Alborea? Oops. What, do you prefer Supreme Leader now? Please. If I knew I'd be repeating myself so soon, I would have gathered my audience. That title is not mine. But then... I'm confused. Who's Rufus? Oh. <laughs> That's this guy's real name. C was a nickname. So it's Rufus, huh? Hmm. I think it's much cuter than C. <laughs> I give it 85 <laughs> points. <clears throat> Ooh, he kicked your butt, S. Why would I care when I don't even get what criteria she's basing these on? So are you famous then, Rufus? Everyone seems to know who you are. He's not just famous. He's super famous. He's the elder son of House Alborea, one of the four great houses of Erebonia, and he became Crossbell's first governor general. Together with the Empire's Chancellor and Crown Prince, he led the country to all-out war. But then he got arrested after it ended. That's all the big common knowledge stuff, but trust me, I know all about the skeletons in his closet. Wow, you're so smart, Nadia. Oh. Is knowing part of handling the unpleasant side of things? Wow, you're so smart, Rufus. Can she try not to stir up trouble with him? Uh, yeah. Well, he's apparently not done making a name for himself. Because three days ago he busted himself out of jail so he could lead a lot of black clad soldiers into Crosswell and occupy it again. Then he declared himself the new supreme leader and claimed he was carrying on the late Chancellor Osborne wheel. And you're saying that wasn't you? Yeah, hang on. You were in Crosswell yesterday and at noon today making statements. When did you have time to go to Hemeldar? We couldn't have been at this crossbell like you say, he's been with us the entirety of today and yesterday. Then that means... So there are two Rufus Alvarea, or more like... One of yours a fraud. So it seems I have no interest in making a public show of him being one, mind you. But I'm the genuine Rufus Alvarea. On that, you have my word. I guess I believe you. Even if Crosswell mistakes the other guy for the real deal, your brother's been able to tell the difference. Can't say I even care. I'm just in it for the Mira. <laughs> Speaking of, I thought the Erebonia government says all your assets. 
How are you gonna pay your fare? I've long kept my assets spread out in the event something like this were to happen. What the government says is a mere fraction of what I own. Oh, okay. You really do prepare for anything, huh? I was worried we were duped into doing charity work for a sec. Well, we come this far. I think it's about time you start filling in the blanks. About what, exactly? You. We don't plan to call things off just because we know who you are now. But you got to admit you are not an average guy, and that means being around you is a huge risk on our part. I think you own us a more thorough explanation what you were up to before we met and what you are after now. It's the least you can do if we are going to keep working together. Very well. I intend to do as much from the very beginning anyway. You will have to understand the full scale of our situation before we advance to the next stage. Rufus' tone remained flat as he recalled recent events. It, oh my god, ah! But no, talk! It began late at night on March 14th when Auroch Fort in the Crozen provinces fell under attack. This was the work of the Ebon Defense Force, who were the 8th the Crossbell Division of the Imperial Defense Force in their escape. Upon feeding the IDF from their underground cells, they continue on to the another cell in that same fort, Rufus Alvarea. Yet their aim was not to free their former leader, but to assist, assassinate him. Rufus defeatedly turned the tables against them, while also managing to extract a wealth of information even if their knowledge lack of the finer details. So they wanted to kill me? Okay, okay. Alright. He learned that they had abducted Prince Oliver and would be executing a major operation in less than 24 hours. He also learned of a small suitcase that the ADF wished to find with great urgency. Seizing trouble bringing in the wake of Crossbell liberation, Rufus then resolved to escape to better assess the situation at hand. The next day, March 15, was no less eventful. An important, an impostor using Rufus' name and face. I wait, wait, wait a second. No, 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 it's not Phantom Thief. Will it be? Storm's crossbell signing ceremony and declare it occupied once more. This information paired with the intelligent gather to suggest further trouble brewing in Hemeldar helped the real Rufus ascertain his next objective. He issued that statement claiming to be the prince abductor to lure class 7 to the imperial capital. And following that, he set his sight of Auroch Canyon to take this enigmatic case the EDF were so desperate seeking. You know the rest, of course. Wow. You have been a busy buy, huh? Well, I've been cooped up in a cell for half a year. I had plenty of pent up energy eager to spend. To continue, it's clear that the action of the EDF and my superior self were planned to the letter. I imagine a multitude of events this past month have been part of their grand scheme, not just the recent attack on the city, the post-war occupation, the occupier's election to ignore my cause to surrender, and even the city's liberation a month ago. If this fake Rufus is pulling the strings here, you been around only gonna be one big headache for him. You think it's possible you have been locked up in the same place as the IDF was intentional? I will assume so. 
everything about it right down to my assassination attempt. And that itself was just a small part of something much greater. Then, what are you planning to do about it? You sound like you have got a pretty good idea of what you are up against. So, what does the real Rufus want? I have two goals. The first is to eliminate the imposter who seeks to use my name for ill. Why this music made me sentimental? Okay. Makes sense if it means them being around equals people trying to kill you. The second is to set up a past debt. Huh? Crosswell current stay status trace its origins to the war that ended not long ago. I, the primary member of the Arab Bloods, was one of two who led the charges in that war. The other being the very man who I revere as a father, the late Chancellor. Having made this mess, it falls into me to clean it up. The Iron Bloods are an awful loyal bunch. I also feel a certain degree of responsibility toward Crossbell as his former Governor General. Let me see if I got my head around this. In short, you want to recitify Crosswell's situation and fix whatever's going on in Erebonia. That sum it up, right? That will be the end result, yes. You know, that's a lot to expect for people to pull off. That's why I never specific specify it being you us to achieve the end result. There's no reason it has to be us who face our enemies. Confronting evil and overcoming it with heart and willpower is best suited to heroes, not villains like myself. Like Rin and his friend. <laughs> okay. Ooh. Who, who we fought earlier and their SESS counterparts in Crosswell. No need to in eliminate what they have perfected. Work for me doesn't feel like our style. What we can do is learn the truth behind this Mirand occurs in our own way. And we can start with a very valuable clue we happen to have in our possession. Now, what, what it is? <laughs> Why are you staring at me? You're so cute that we can't help ourselves. Really? I see. That makes perfect sense. <laughs> to be admired is the destiny of a masterpiece. Gaze upon me to your heart's content. It's hard to me to picture a doll being the key to unreveal all those going on. I mean, she got purple cloth. Purple mirror? It's weird, yeah. And her not remembering anything makes it that much harder. Ah, Miro! Coming from the Miro, if she got back, if she come from the Miro, if she create the Miro, if she is the Miro, if she, uh, whatever, getting out of the Miro will make her not remember anything. Got any plans for tackling that one boss? I just happen to have a question for you, too regarding that very issue. George Rosenborg was her manufacturer, and the man who requested that she be delivered to me? Well, technically, yeah. Now that our work in Hemeldar is done, I was hoping to visit him in person. But your hesitate response tells me that it may not be possible, has something befall him? Nope, he's fine. It's just not much will be gained by going to see him. He's the one who gave us the job, but he specified that he was just an interminate. Oh, okay. Okay, so that, that makes sense. So I, I'm guessing she comes from the mirror. My guess is that whoever gave him, give us the job, also the one who got him to make hair. 
mainly cause he didn't seem to know much more than we do right now. I see, then our only choice is to aid her in recovering her memories after all. I assume you don't know where you were originally crafted. I wish I did, but I'm afraid not. I got a place we can start at least. George didn't re Oh! He said to pick it up from the moon temple. He must have hidden it there before hightailing it out of Crossbell. I mean, uh, it'd been a safe bet to say she was made there or close to there. Almost certainly this Rosenborg studio on the main mountain path then. Sounds about right. We passed it on the way to the, to the temple but didn't go inside. A wise decision. If the maester hid the case elsewhere then the studio has been compromised in some manner, I'm sure. We still do not know if her memory loss was unintended or deliberated. But danger or not, it's possible that we'll find something to ease her current predicament. So we know where we are going then? Our course was always going to lead to Crossbell. The timing is up. We may as well go now. But how are we gonna get in when the borders are so well protected? Fear not, for I have a plan, so it will require some preparation. I need your participation in order for it to work, but the details can wait. For now, rest well, children. I was getting so sleepy while they talk, but I feel wide awake now. Perhaps I'll tour the ship and see what everyone is up to. Hey Lapis, is she asleep? Sure is. That's a shame, I wanted to play with her. Sorry to disappoint, but let her rest, okay? She always wants to sleep, so today's been a long, rough one for her. Does she normally sleep a lot? That's an understatement, she spent most of our off days out like a light. She even fell asleep in the middle of combat. Has she ever been to a doctor to fix it? Oh no, she's not sick, just very laid back. It makes life a real pain sometimes, so let me tell you. <laughs> I'm sure it does. But she's my partner, and there's no one else I'd rather depend on when it counts. Besides, I swore to protect her in her brother's place. I intend to honor that for the rest of my life. Are you and her brother different or the same? I'm finding it hard to wrap my mind around the idea of siblings. Let me put it like this. How would you feel if George Rosenberg were to make another doll exactly like you? If they were exactly like me then they would be perfect. The world being blessed with more perfect things to admire is a good thing. Well, what, what if that doll wasn't as cute, pretty, strong or emotive as you are? What if others call them a failure? There isn't any such thing as some Rosenberg that's also a failure. But if by some chance that were to happen, I'd be very annoyed to hear others speaking of them that way. Then, there you go then, that's all siblings are. Do you think Rufus would be annoyed if he hears something like that about his brother? That's who that boy we saw before is, right? Beats me, I don't know the first thing about what goes on in that guy's head. So, it's a mystery? Yeah. Anyway, you should try and asset some rest while we have the chance, assuming dolls need rest anyway. Okay, thank you, Swim. Mm, 
Now should I take it slow and tear your limb from limb or should I give your ad delectable dollop of poison to make it nice and quick? Nadia stream sure are colorful. What's up? I thought you'd be asleep by now. I'm not tired yet. Say, why don't you give me a neat bedtime story? Like what? You're kind of putting me on the spot. Okay then, why don't you tell me about your swords then? They are neat enough. I like the way you can take them apart and put them back together. Yeah, they got a pretty unique mechanic to them. When they are apart, I mark my target to hit them dead on without a problem. Then I put them together so I can really lay into them for a ton of damage. They are more like special orbits that whip on if you want to be neat picky with it. It sounds a little too complicated for me, but you sure look amazing when you use them. Hmm. I wonder what it's like to have a sibling. Do I have any out there? Hmm. Well, if he's in my little customer, you want something? I just felt the urge to tour the ship and you are hardly big. I'm still bigger than you, and come to think of it, I haven't introduced myself to you yet, now have I? The name's Jingo. If there's anything you want your hands on, you just give me a hole. I'm Lapis. Nice to meet you, Lapis. By the way, you're not human, right? Indeed, I'm not. I'm a proud Rosenborg doll. Really? The world's full of surprise. You don't look surprised to me. When you are in my line of work, you meet all kinds of folk. You are the f not the first unusual customer I had. I'm not... Your job sounds very interesting. You know what else will be interesting? Mods. Could I interest you in a gladly gun for, a, for an arm or eyes that I will let you shoot laser out of them? I'll give you a pretty discount. Uh, you, you can do all that? I worth a shot. Hmm. I, I agree, it will be interesting, but none of, of it, it sounds as beautiful as my current design, so I will kindly pass. No big, if you change your mind, you know where am I? I certainly do. Anyway, it's about time for Cerberus lessons. Cerberus! What was his lesson about? Being the strongest guard dog around. Well, now I got to know, what does that take? So far, I had him help with the cleaning and run my shop, but today he's, <laughs> he's gotta be able to navigate anything life throws at him, and that includes a steering wheel. Okay then, first I need you to plop myself on top of my seat. Wait, is this gonna work? I guess as long as your front pounds can reach the wheel, it's all good. You can do this, Cerberus. Good boy. Hang on a minute. Well, I wasn't going to bot in at first, but I, I can keep my mouth shut after what I just hear. Oh yeah, what's that? Maybe the whole idea of trying to teach a dog to fly an airship. Still not to, not hearing what the problem is. How is he supposed to learn if he doesn't take the wheel? <laughs> All of that is a problem. You're trying to make a dog transcend the limits of the canine species. <laughs> Come on now, you are just ex exaggerating. But you are welcome to tune in on his lesson if you want. What part of what I say makes you think? I just had a dream where the whole airship fell out of the sky. Where are you, S? Come for me! Anyway, we're paying for this flight, so if you want to attempt the impossible, so do it on your own time. 
We like to leave for the landing, if you please. Oh, fine, you are one tough customer. <sighs> Cerberus is so cute! I hope I can pet him later on. I'm sorry, what was that? You're trying to say that I'm adorable, aren't you? Well, of course I am. But don't worry, you're adorable too. What's up? You changed your mind about that body mod? Not exactly, I was just curious how much could you upgrade if I really asked you to. Can't say without getting my hands dirty, but I bet if you really want to, we could probably get all parts swapped out. Guessing we had to call in a specialist though on account of how obviously well specially out you are. Oh I see, thanks I guess. What bro this on anyway? Well I was thinking earlier if I exchange my parts will I still be afterwards? Don't be silly, it had take a lot more than changing out some nuts and bolts for you to turn into someone different. But what if we took out of a lot of parts? What if I asked you to replace everything and there wasn't a single piece of me left from before? Could you still say that I'm the same person then? That I'm still a Lapis Rosenberg? You're asking some pretty big head stretcher dolly. You got the wrong girl for that kind of philosophical conversation. Let me ask you this, at the end of the day, does it really matter? I don't know, that's what I want to figure out. I'm afraid this side of the deck is occupied, you'll have to sleep elsewhere. I wasn't planning to sleep out here. Oh? Then what's brought you outside? I wanted to go stargazing. What about you? I wanted to take in the night air. Since we're both here, there's something I'd like to ask. What is it? I know that you're a famous man, but are you a good man? Or a bad man? <laughs> bad, though that would be putting it mildly. So very bad? Very, very bad. I have used anything and everything to advance my interests, be it titles, fame, or even those pure of heart. There is little point in feigning a moral compass when human lives hold no value to me, or acting chivalrous, when all that does is hinder me. Do you still feel that way? I do. I'm using you, Swin and Nadia, to bring my designs to fruition, am I not? I'm also using those we met in the capital, like my brother. None of that sounds like something someone good would do, yes. You really are a very bad man. <laughs> I'm glad we could come to an understanding. So, armed with that knowledge, what do you intend to do? Am I supposed to do something? I suppose a doll has no reason to care if a human is good or evil. Being a doll has nothing to do with it. But were you hoping I would admonish you? Or perhaps comfort you? Of course not. Okay, then I still intend to do nothing. Whether I praise you for your deeds as a hero, or chastise you for your misdeeds as a villain, it won't change you at your core. You are who you are. Just how does humanity look through your lens for you to think in such simple terms? I don't know. I can't answer that when I'm still learning about what it means to be human. All I can say is, I don't see if you're good or bad, where you're from, or how you were raised. I don't see what you've done or haven't done, what you possess or what you lack.
because none of those are what make you exist as a person. So it can't be that you suddenly don't exist just because someone decides to reject those parts of you. That's uh, quite a philosophical approach to the matter. Or perhaps that objective thinking is the most one of artificial intelligence can fathom. I don't know. How could I know? Just to me, being is what makes a human a human. Perhaps you're right. And so, it's what makes you, you. <sighs> Perhaps you're right. I... I don't remember the exact moment I began to search for meaning in my life. My father elected to raise me as his own son, irrespective of the fact I was born because his wife laid with another man. He did so with the same ease he rejected his flesh and blood because he was born from a common woman. When I learned the truth, I finally understood that House Alberea wanted me not as a human being, but as a product of noble blood. It was so hard to bear that it made me sick. Was that all? Was that the only reason I existed? I refused to accept it. I couldn't take it. And as I turned my eyes from this terrible truth, a new, more terrible thought dawned upon me. If that was not the reason I existed, then what was? That was when I met him. It is said we seek that which we do not have. Through him, I sought the father I never had. I convinced myself that if I did as sons do and became more than he ever was, then I would understand the real reason for my existence. And there it was. At last, I had a goal, something to pursue. I stopped at nothing to make that goal a reality. There was no effort too ambitious, no principle too sacred to violate. But no matter what I did, it still wasn't enough. Everything I had done to secure my victory had led to a resounding, humiliating defeat. A defeat at the hands of my own brother, who, despite his unfortunate upbringing, had grown into someone strong and true. I envied him for that. But perhaps I should have known all along that a mere product could never hope to have a real, genuine purpose. The whole predicament would have been worth a laugh had it not been so deeply painful. Why am I here? What is my reason for being? Who am I? You are who you are. I don't see what you've done or haven't done, what you possess or what you lack. Because none of those are what make you exist as a person. Just to me, being is what makes a human a human. <laughs> Such nonsense. I thought you weren't planning to sleep out here. I'm unsure if dolls are capable of catching colds, but I believe you've taken in the stars enough for one night. Good. Damn. Here we go. Okay. The more here we go, we are very in the middle of Corsville funding. March 19. 
Are you all prepared? Ready to go anytime? We're good at this stuff. I don't know what we are prepared for, but I'll give it my best. Our interest will be best served if you say nothing at all. Mm -hmm. Okay then, I'm gonna make a landing. Is he gonna pretend to be the fake Rufus? Halt, are you authorized to be here? Uh, Your Excellency, what is the meaning of this? You stand in the presence of our supreme leader. We inform you in advance of our arrival. Why were you not ready and waiting? Oh, 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 oh our deepest apologies. There's no need to be quite so harsh. These, these are a good man. This airport has only been under their jurisdiction for a few days. It takes up time to adjust to a new responsibility. So you are merciful, your <laughs> excellency. <laughs> no, I, I'm, I'm laughing because we must be like. We we ready a car. We we ready a car for you at once. No need. Arrange for one personally. So remain here and continue your duties. Yes, your excellency. What a bizarre experience. Not everyone gets to be their own imposter. It's, it's hilarious. Good on you for thinking it up, ah, boss. Well, it wasn't lying about them being good. It won't be long before they learn the truth from their sup superiors and come after us. We shouldn't remain in this city any longer than is needed. Can't hard to scope out the place first though, right? I suppose we'll have to make it a brief tour before continuing on for the main mountain path. Does that part of scooping out mean inspecting all the restaurants? That gonna have to wait till next time. Oh! Oh! Alright, I got this stuff from Jingo. What it is? A farewell gift, apparently. What does she think? We're off on a picnic or something? What's a picnic? <laughs> you are too darn cute, LP. No point looking at gift horse in the mountain. Let's use it. Well, look like tourist or something. Good for camo. Indeed, I'll leave it used to your discretion. Just try not to stand out too much. Got it. It may be nice to take a breather every now and again and again. Rufus is now in stealth mode. So Rufus will move around the city in stealth mode due to Ramda's functionality. Know that when Rufus is, is, in, is the party leader in the town, he can't be seen by others or use shops. My turn! Oh my god, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry! Okay, I need to eat something, of course. Um, be right by, Key. All the lights could pass in by And all my thoughts, they multiply I see it flash before my eyes